All right, so it was a couple of days ago. Yeah, just a couple of days ago, our nation went through a very uh, dark day, I would say. January 6th, 2021 was the day where a mob of rioters took the Capitol building by storm, ransacked it, and made a mess of our pol politicians, uh, our, 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 our country. That shit blew my mind. Yeah. Me too. Like when, she, you for, when did you find out? Were we driving? But you told me and I was like, wait, what? And I, when I started seeing pictures, I'm like, we're supposed to be the most powerful country in the world. And we have like inside like perpetrators. I'm like, damn, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, I waited yeah. to get this info from you because I knew we were gonna talk about it, but just what, like, just seeing the pictures, I wanted to read the captions so bad, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. But I was wondering how the fuck did this even happen in the first place Weird. where our security and police didn't grab them and kick yeah. their, kick the, what the fuck? That, that might be the biggest happened? story that's out of this. Weird. Like watching it, I was like, that's really easy to get into the Capitol, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. everyone was like, we could steal oh, the, the, the so Declaration easy. of Independence. Like, wow. isn't the Capitol, isn't it, isn't it a public place though? Cause like, there's protests that happen all the time. Obviously, they're, we don't hear about it because it's not as they big. They went inside. Yeah, no, went, no, no, I know that, but I'm showed saying, up with uh, bulletproof vests, bulletproof helmets. They were like, ready they were for ready for some wild shit. And for some reason, the cops basically there there's like footage i mean i'm not gonna i'm just so much footage i'm not gonna show any footage but basically there were there were cops seen like opening doors for people holding the hands of a woman as she's leaving the capitol hill like just like letting her like oh yeah there you go you know get home safe you know that kind of attitude and twitter went off twitter like you know basically it's like hey when George Floyd stuff happened and yeah. uh, BLM took over the and tear was trying to make bullets. a statement yeah like that was a very different response than than what they did at Capitol Hill. Yeah, uh, on the other wow. side, so I don't know the actual like I don't know the reason why why it was so easy to like enter, but I don't know if it has to do with either the logistical consequences of uh, defunding the police, mm -hmm. where now they are understaffed. Because I know at least for like oh, LAPD, maybe. like they've pulled a lot of patrol cars off the street because they got defunded like crazy. Um, like the cop per like square mile is now drastically decreased. So I don't know if that is the same case in DC where if they had, I don't know, 10 guards, now there's down to five. What? And then also the other side of it um, that I have seen, which is kind of unfortunate is um, some people are like, this is what you asked for. Mm. So I don't know if it's like that kind of sentiment too. So it's, it's kind of scary. I don't, I don't know, know if the numbers thing makes sense because it, was, it wasn't like a spur of the moment they appeared out of nowhere. It was like a planned event, you know? And like, let's say they have a planned march here. They put out extra cops because it's a planned march or a planned thing where they're like, just in case something happens, we'll put out extra people. And that's the part where I think it's the emotional sentiment part where if there are bitter cops, right? I'm not saying that they are, but if there are bitter cops and they already hate the people for defunding them, how easy is it for them to now? Because I've also seen pictures of where it looks like the cops are just letting them in. Yeah, yeah, there was the one where it was like the barricades, right? And they just kind of moved the barricades. Yeah, is it their way of trying to get back at what happened? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it, yeah, it makes sense. It's, it's also it, that's not gonna help anything. Yeah, petty. everyone's so emotional and pissed off. No one's making any smart moves. But this is also kind of like you know, if you're gonna look at like the sides involved, right? So yeah. the initial you know protests that happened in our country was uh, you know. Uh, BLM police, police injustice and, and police injustice and then a lot of Antifa yeah. uh, uh, people going out into the public and just you know causing a lot of uh, you know problems and then this time though it wasn't necessarily Antifa and BLM and you know the, I read that the left wing was. groups but they were there <laughs> they were there but I think a, a bigger portion of them were were MAGA Trump supporters oh for sure yeah. it was mainly it, them mainly them yeah. and uh, I mean and there's a lot of speculation that. Um, you know the the MAGA people were the, the 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 sophisticated, quiet, like we're just here peaceful types, and then the real people that were causing the problems were the Antifa. But that's you know I did see a video of a uh, Antifa guy smashing a window, and all the MAGA people were like, "Stop, stop!" And then yeah. they pulled him out, and then. They, he went back to the Antifa crowd. Right, but there's also a lot of videos showing the MAGA people like just like sure. bum rushing. They're yeah. bum rushing Capitol Hill, like, pushing the through the police. Walls and shit? Yeah, like, like one lady got shot right in the chest. Like she was oh, crawling through a, a, a broken window. They broke the window, and you, in the video you can see a, a, a cop like 
Like basically Stop. holding up the gun. You Whoa. can't really hear what he's saying, but he's literally holding the gun for like 10 seconds and just like, hey, come on, like what are you yeah. gonna do? What are you doing? Like stop that. And then he, and shot, then he shot her. She falls from, and it's a high oh, window. She, oh, she oh, falls oh, like maybe a good like six feet. And then she just like she's like lifeless the moment she falls. His that's the that's stupid, right? Like, what yeah. makes you think you can break into property and not get shot? What also shows how stupid they are because you see the like the people bum rush go in, right? They're like, fuck yeah, and they run in, and once they get in, they're like, what we're what? inside. <laughs> what do we do? How do we change the government? Yeah. Get the papers. Yeah. What papers? Burn on the ground. <laughs> Throw it. That's the papers. And they're like, take a picture of me. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, once they get in, they didn't know what to Stealing do. Stealing a podium yeah. and shit, like, yeah. what the fuck? And then also, I've been seeing other side stories come out of this. Like, for example, there's this dude that went in with his company badge card, and he got <laughs> fired, because it's like, wow. why the fuck would you go in there representing like the company? Here's a, I, there's, a, there's a level of privilege to be had when you do certain things, and you don't expect to get hurt. Yeah, like the lady there's climbing a, into a window, I'm there's assuming. There's a high level of privilege when you're yeah. climbing over cops or whatever, where people are pointing guns at you and you're thinking in your head, there's no way me. they're gonna yep. shoot me. There's you think it's a racial no thing? Way. Hell yeah, <laughs> white people are way more brave <laughs> against the police <laughs> than not <laughs> black, I can't be shot. And they just go, they just go for it. Other people, you have to like second guess yourself, right? Where you're like, am I gonna get hurt here? And then you have to go, Okay, even yeah. if I get hurt, I'll do it anyways, you know? And But then there are the other people who are like, there's no the way. The cop that had his knee on George Floyd, like, he was there for that long, knowing, like, I'm not gonna get any consequences for this. It's like, even Dave Chappelle, you know when he did the skit, right, where he's like, if he has his white friend in the car, they treat him differently. It's a thousand percent true, but the problem is, a lot of white people can't see it because they never lived it. Well, yeah, they, they never, never seen the other side. They never seen the other side, they never yeah. experienced it. And for them, the police is someone they can rely on, they can call for help, whatever. But for us, we've been on both sides. It's like, if you're an Asian guy that looks clean cut with money, the cops are on your side. But if you have a bald head and you dress a certain way, they're against you. And it doesn't matter. Like, I think it's just really about if you fit the profile or not. And if you fit the profile and you don't vibe with the culture, or you don't look like one of them, or you don't look like a safe person, what ends up happening is you're a criminal. You're a criminal. Like, I'm gonna treat you like one. You're a criminal by uh, association. Yeah, and then their job is to find criminals and arrest them. So if you look like one, you know, they don't have the time to think and be like, uh, is this person good or bad? They're like, oh, he, d he fits it. Let me pull him over. All right, what can I get him on? All right, I'm gonna do this and this. And then this isn't right or wrong. I'm saying that this is the thought process that goes behind policing and they do this repetitively nonstop. So it, it becomes a, a number. You're not a human being, you become a statistic. Right. So what happened that. with the MAGA people showing up wearing their MAGA stuff? There's like red, white, and blue and stuff and, and they're painted wearing Viking horns and stuff. Did that not look criminal? Or like, the fact that they were even acting out the way they did, that didn't look criminal enough for the cops to do anything. In anymore. my opinion though, I don't know what the cops are thinking, like in that specific sense, but like I'm just talking just what I've experienced in LA and how we get treated differently. But also, if you think about it, like even within, to me, it's more like dominant culture, right? Even within white folks. If you are white with a bald head and you look, you don't look a part of society, right? And then like, let's say you look like a skinhead or a gangster or like, maybe you look like white trash, quote unquote. The cops are gonna treat you like shit just the same. They're not gonna, I've seen it happen. Like they don't treat them like a white kid from Huntington Beach that's clean cut. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's more of a, do you fit the description of someone who's likely to commit a crime? And then that's where the whole racism and stereotypes and stuff like that come from. When they look at this, I don't know what they're thinking because to me, I never seen a white guy with a raccoon thing on his head <laughs> running around naked outside of a sports event. Well, yeah. here's the thing too. I feel like, uh, like Bart was saying, there's so much emotion, right? And I feel like, Cops are also victim to their own emotions and how they feel. Absolutely, about they're human. So when you think, if you compare a protest that's literally against cops, you know, and then how you're gonna feel as a cop being at an event where everyone's against you, whether or not it's peaceful, right? So they're gonna be, they might be more aggressive compared to, let's say, this march at, at the Capitol. People have blue line flags and they're like, these guys 
are in favor of me. Yeah. So, so yeah. like whether or not I think they're gonna commit a crime, these guys are in favor of me. So I, we're, not, we're, yes. we're, we're maybe we're on the same team yeah. or something. Compared to you know for a fact, even if uh, this other march is peaceful, you know they're against you. Yeah. So like then you have your emotion playing a factor. Where yeah. You're tension like, tension is and, higher or lower. And whenever we mention these things too, like it's it, you can't get it confused with us arguing for morality or what's ethical. It's not really about right or wrong here. It's really about understanding the motives in the situation. So for example, with like even adding on to Nelson's point, right? Like the whole why cops might not care or whatever, or maybe they feel like these guys are on their side is because we have to do that. We have to make the effort of trying to understand, you know, um, how they feel as a human being because professionally they're expected to do their job but since it's a human behind that badge you also have to understand that bias that comes along with it so like in this situation are they all racist white cops i don't know i think that's just an easy out like to 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 blanket it that way i feel like cops are multicultural and they themselves are human beings that are like why do a lot of people fucking want us out? Why do they hate us? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, so setting the whole cop dilemma thing aside, Trump supporters stormed the Capitol because they wanted to change the electoral college votes. They want to stop the counting, yeah. The counting, right? So, but then what they ended up doing was further hurting their cause because there was a lot of people that that were in, in in that whole space saying like, well, I was gonna decide this thing, but yeah. after this happened, I'm, I'm doing this other Like, what's it, the Georgia yeah. senator or whatever, yeah. right? She was like about to dissent, and all of a sudden she was like, I was going to dissent today. But after this shit, you made it worse. Right. So I'm not yeah. gonna say anything now. Yeah, a lot of people are pointing fingers back at Trump, like even Pence is in a position where he's like, Dude, I was gonna ride or die, ride and die with you, but this is kind of like the sh the final straw, man. Like yeah. everyone's basically leaving Trump's side, and, and yeah, because I, I don't know how true this is, but I saw a screenshot of Trump saying, uh, tweeting, like, "I'll see you January 6th. I don't know if that's <laughs> yeah, no, no. These are all been ta true? all these tweets have been taken down now. Uh, but like, Twitter so came that, in. that's like evidence that he was behind planning this whole thing. Then I mean, yeah. he, even the day before, like yeah. on January 5th, he was at a rally telling them to go to the, oh, the march and. I saw this and he was saying fight and stuff like that. I saw this meme of Kim Jong Un saying, "I thought I was crazy." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "That's a good one." So I was I was following the election pretty closely, yeah. and why something like this can like boil it makes sense to me, right? Because you have two different complete worlds colliding, where like you have people who. Um, accept and understand that like okay biden's gonna be coming into office and then you have a whole different group of people who are like that election was stolen by um big media right. big tech and you have trump echo echoing the same yeah. thing and, and saying that he's not going boss. to yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. let it happen basically so like the guys that stormed the capitol they believe that they're trying that they're saving america and the integrity behind america and then you you see the rest of the world looking at them like that's not the right way to do it, bro. But then they're desperate. Yeah. So then when people get desperate, they get crazy. And that's what I don't want to see. And I'm like, come on, dude. Trump's gotta like take it a notch back. And and if he is trying to deal with it, even if there was corruption, even if there was voter fraud, do it smart. Yeah. Because in my opinion, this isn't smart. It divides the nation. Exactly. Be dignified yeah. about you know your loss. You're losing the the election. Well, now and he all. did, didn't he? Like finally he, he yeah after after Twitter had to censor him basically banned him for twelve yeah. hours uh, Facebook and Instagram yeah. banned him for the next two weeks the until rest of his uh, until the, yeah rest stupid? of his presidency he could have left gracefully and made a comeback in four years if yeah. Biden didn't yeah. do such a good job like he ruined his fucking chances of a second yeah. he's yeah. not gonna stop rallying I I don't he still might come yeah. back in four years I mean he, even he even when he finally said yeah Biden's gonna take the presidency now like. He still says, this isn't over, we're still yeah, gonna Yeah, he still had to say that. So like, no, I mean, you know, since he became president, he never stopped rallying. Uh, yeah. So, do you think when he's done being president, he's gonna stop rallying? I think he's still gonna rally. I think he's still, he's still gonna, gonna rally. His army. I, I'm talking about um, increasing his possibility of a second term is now killed because of this reason. Oh, that's what we thought when he first ran. I don't know. And to close he's gonna out come the, back around. And to close out this video, uh, Ironically, Mitch McConnell, uh, who is a senator, a Republican senator, uh, right before the MAGA mob stormed the Capitol Hill, 
he was making a speech um, and he was talking about how at this time it, it's, it's not a good idea to form a mob and to fight back you know with force and stuff because it would just it would prove a point that America is not stable enough to be democratic you know mm -hmm. and like and even if the if the if the vote was stolen it's still not right to be violent and uh, it would set a president if this were to happen this will set a president for future elections to just yeah. encourage people to be like in four years when we go through another election it just might be the new normal to yeah, just to bring arms in and and just like riot and like destroy things and it's just it's not a good look and it's it's it's, it's gonna rewire our brains uh, politically yeah. and then as a country so he, he was saying stop it even though Giuliani saying uh, Giuliani literally said in during a speech he said so let's have trial by combat literally oh, you know wow. it's like what the fuck are you thinking yeah no and fucking Giuliani uh, man why does he even have a voice after fucking getting caught almost <laughs> trying to yeah. fuck that girl on yeah. Borat <laughs> man I don't know I think what separates us from I think a lot of unstable nations is the fact that we still haven't yet got to that point since the civil war of armed internal combat and it's every it's been through the mind and through legislation and through politics right but if you look at examples of unstable nations that constantly have military coups and rebellions and infighting like we can easily get there. People think we're like hella fucking impenetrable and like we're solid, but it's like, nah, we can get there and we have the guns to do it. But like, fuck man, I don't wanna get there cause I love this country. And I hope that we can stay above that and, and do it through the mind, you know? Yeah, well, I guess we'll find out, I don't know. <laughs>